Hello and welcome to the Daily Racing Farm webinar on getting the most out of the DRF Plus subscription. I'm Peter Thomas Fornital, joined as always on these webinars by Mike Hogan, Mr. At DRF Formulator himself. Mike, what's going on today? Well, I'm excited. We get to uh, we get to look at a lot of the features that come with any DRF Plus subscription. Of course, um, you can buy one at the end. We'll, we'll give a code for getting a, a three months uh, discounted. Um, but even if you don't purchase DRF Plus as an individual package item, um, you get DRF Plus with any. Uh, formulator plan of five cards or more, any classic plan with five cards or more. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you get DRF Plus even if you're already uh, a customer of, of DRF.com. So um, I'm excited we get to look at a lot of features that exist there that I think a lot of people don't even know exist that, that they have access to for free as part of their subscription because I think many people think of DRF Plus as, oh, I get to read all of the articles on the site now. Yeah, and it's so much more than that. I think that's a great point. The third member of our team today is producer Charlie Zeggers. Charlie might be chiming in on the broadcast from time to time with questions from you, the listeners. Uh, there's a way through the webinar, actually, that you can submit your questions. If things come up that you don't understand or would like us to talk about more fully, or if we gloss over something you want to hear a little bit more about, you can use that little box. You're seeing it on the screen there and submit a question. Charlie will break in or we'll do a little bit at the end. We'll sort of play that part by ear um, and hopefully we can get to as many of those questions as we can. If not, you can always hit us up for questions on Twitter. Mike, as I mentioned before, at DRF Formulator. I'm at Looms Boldly. So we'll get to as many of those as we can. We want this to be an interactive process. I know Mike agrees with me when he sees part of our jobs as being resources for the fans out there um, and covering all kinds of topics that, uh, that, that listeners or readers might want a little bit extra insight about. That's what we're here for, so mm -hmm. don't hesitate mm -hmm. to ask either here or on Twitter. So Mike just made the point. A lot of people think, and I think at one point I was one of these people, that DRF Plus just means you get to read all the articles. And yes, that is a major benefit, getting to read top-level DRF handicappers and reporters from racetracks all over the country. But DRF Plus is so much more than that. There are all these tools that are guaranteed to make you a better handicapper. Mike, do we want to go through the whole list before diving in one by one, or do we want to just go right ahead and have a look at those articles themselves, specifically the race previews? Well, what I'll do is I'll quickly go through slide by slide, spend a few seconds on each, and then I want to jump over to the website and we can dive into actual content that exists there now. So I'll do that. I'll, before I do that, though, I'll mention that uh, this, of course, is just one in a series of webinars that we do. They generally fall on Thursdays. Today, uh, due to Pete's schedule, we're, we're doing this one on a Wednesday. Um, but uh, just go to drf.com slash blogs slash free dash handicapping dash webinars to sign up for all of them. Um, they run through the beginning of March. There's a lot of good ones in there uh, coming up. In it. Uh, and after the new year, we'll, we're going to do a kind of an intro to Formulator one that should be fun if, if uh, folks have never used Formulator before. I'm looking forward to hopefully getting to be a part of a whole bunch of those. Some of these topics we've covered before. If you want sure. to get a little bit of background, you can go onto the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel and check out some of the past work. But That's we're right. always moving forward, adding features, coming up with new ideas of how to use these powerful tools. So that'll be a, a great opportunity to delve a little bit deeper into some of these topics in the new year. Exactly, exactly. Um, but yes, yeah, so DRF Plus, of course, gives you access to the, those race previews and articles and analysis from handicappers and reporters. And a lot of them, and, and I'll show you an example a little later uh, for a race coming up tomorrow at Los Al, a lot of them have really fantastic nuggets from the reporters talking to trainers that can actually help your handicapping. Um, and I've got a couple examples on the screen here. One is for a race that happened a couple weeks ago, the Garland of Roses, and Princess Violet was returning from uh, a six-month layoff and was one of the favorites in the race. And you'll notice there was a quote there from her trainer, Mike Hushin, saying he kind of had to hurry to get her into the race. 
um, you know, uh, hinting that maybe she wasn't quite ready and, and she might be better in her second start off of that layoff. And, and, and she ended up uh, running a non-threatening second in that one. Uh, and then I've, I've also got another example on the screen um, for the pick six carryover a couple weeks ago. Uh, or maybe last week, uh, where Gary Golo was particularly high on um, one of his horses who ended up winning and, and, and started the pick six uh, sequence with a, with a decent price, beating a, beating a, a short price favorite. So uh, it's not just, oh, you, you get to read uh, what people write. It's, it, a lot of times there's really good information that can actually help your handicapping. Very specific, obviously, in those examples. And one thing I've noticed following racing from over here in the UK, since I've been stationed here for the last few months, it's much more the game is the way the game is structured around here. There's less actual uh, doing the nitty gritty of handicapping and a lot more anecdotal stuff. And those trainer quotes, that's something over here that people will pay extra to get an archive of all the trainer quotes. It's something that's included with your DRF Plus subscription. People should take advantage when they're handicapping individual races and I know it's not the topic of today's webinar, but I'd be remiss to not give the fate, one of my favorite features of DRF Formulator, the program, a plug here and mention you can always pull this information out and put it in your, in your notes, uh, right. trip notes or horse sure. notes in your DRF Formulator PPs, and then you'll have that information. The next time that short horse comes up, um, you know, Princess Violet in this case, you'll know, you know what, wasn't fully cranked last time, maybe today is the day. So yeah, there's, absolutely. there's a lot of different uh, potential uses for that information. Absolutely. Uh, and then real quick, we'll jump through. Of course, you also get access to the full content on DRF Live, which is at live.drf.com, but also intermixed within the homepage feed. Uh, you know, and sometimes this is up to the minute analysis. I've got an example here about Mike Watchmaker, about how Gulfstream, Gulfstream's main track was playing on opening day. A lot of times this is really useful information that comes up either right before a race or in the middle of a card or uh, you know, maybe some paddock observations from some of the, the folks out of the track. Really useful for, for your handicapping. Um, and if you've ever used DRF Plus, you, you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Real-time information. That's the name of the game. That's an yeah. edge that other players are not going to have. Um, right. That, that's one of the hardest things with racing. Even with information as great as the past performances that we offer in daily racing form, you know, most of your serious competition is looking at that. There's plenty of your competition looking at DRF Live, but not as many people. So if you can right. follow along through the course of the day, that's a way to get an edge. If you can spot a track bias, that can be a, an opportunity to take a so-so day and make it into something spectacular. For sure, for sure. So real quick, we'll move through. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the enhanced entries now uh, with a DRF Plus subscription. You get access to... Uh, a lot of dif different inf information, hot stats on certain horses, uh, analysis and picks. You can read the closer looks. You can essentially, through the entry screen, now do some really relatively uh, basic handicapping without even downloading an actual past performance. Um, so we'll show you that. We'll also show you the access page, which is if you have DRF Plus, you should bookmark this. It's I'll show you how to get to it, but you can you can even type it in now. It's DRF. Uh, dot com slash drf dash plus plus dash access. This is kind of our jumping off point for a lot of the things that I'm going to show today. Uh, Great dashboard for sure. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and that dashboard has the chart archive, which is available for the last calendar year. Um, and it's uh, searchable by horse or track. We'll show you how to use that uh, later in the webinar. It also has buyer pars and buyers of the week. We'll take a look at that. Uh, trainer patterns, which is a little different. It's by track and has some simple stats. It goes back three years. It's a little different from what you get in Formulator. It's not as searchable, but it can be useful certainly um, in your handicapping. I'll show you how to use that one. Uh, positive ROI reports are fantastic, um, especially if you see multiple ones for certain for certain horses showing up. Um, uh, again, Formulator ha has a lot of this, but these are ways to um, really pick out certain horses that might uh, might be worth betting on, uh, on on any track on on a given day. That's a resource in particular. I think contest players need to know about. We'll we'll talk about that. For sure. Uh, for sure. And similarly, the key race report does the same sort of thing, but it lists any horse running today 
that uh, is coming out of what is deemed a key race with at least two next start winner, winners, and those are three are, are listed in bold. We'll show you those. Uh, the debut reports uh, is, is a really interesting tool. Uh, we'll dive into that. It's, it's broken down by trainer sire or dam sire. Um, the trainer information is available if you have formulator, but the others um, are not. So it's, it's quite useful for, for horses making their first career start. Uh, and then there's some other features too. We'll, we'll go, if we have time, we'll go over the breeze figs. We'll show daily game plan, which has picks and analysis from, from our handicappers. I actually have one today in there uh, for, for Gulfstream we can take a look at. Uh, and then we'll take a look at the winner's books, um, which is, is, is very useful. I love that the, feature. Yeah, yeah, very cool for research and development. We'll talk about that when we, we yeah. get to it. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's switch from the PowerPoint. We'll jump over to um, DRF.com. I've got the screen up here. Uh, before we dive into the, the other ones, I mentioned a race coming up at Los Al tomorrow where there was a, a write-up that, that could be particularly useful with your handicapping. I'll, I'll scroll down to it. I, I like that on the new, uh, new homepage they've added this right rail uh, that shows the top headlines, but it also breaks it down by track. Um, and the one that I'm mentioning is this Fu Fusaichi Samurai making his debut. Um, if you scroll through, you'll see, and, and, and we didn't go to entries, but uh, take my word, this horse is 2-1 to one on the morning line. He's the morning line favorite. He's debuting for Bob Baffert. Uh, Steve Anderson has a couple quotes from Bob Baffert on this horse, and you'll, you'll note um, he is a half-sibling to Global View, who is strictly a turf router. Uh, and this horse is debuting sprinting on the dirt. Um, and ba Bob Baffert says it's taken a little while to get him going. He's had a lot of little things. He was a little immature. And then he later says, I think he'll probably need one. He'll be ready for the big meet at Santa Anita. That right there is fantastic information. That's the kind of thing that I want to know about a first-time starter that's going to be a short price. And um, if the trainer thinks maybe he's not going to be cranked up for this race and we're pointing more to Santa Anita, those are the kinds I love to tr try and uh, beat at a short price. Maybe he's good enough to win anyway, um, but and you'll see I have a, a stat right below it from Formulator. Bob Baffert is only two for 26 with a 69 cent ROI with first time starters at Los Alamitos. So probably something he's done before with some of his immature horses, getting them started at, uh, at, at, at Los Sal or another lesser track since Los Sal's only been running thoroughbreds for uh, whatever it is now. Two years, yeah. Year. Right. But, but still, it, it, it indicates uh, exactly what you're saying, Mike. And even if the horse doesn't go off at the 2-1 to one of the morning line, even if you're able to eliminate a horse that's, say, 5-1, to one, just by taking that percentage out of the pool, you're essentially – getting rid of the takeout and putting yourself in a situation where you could bet and expect to win. So it's, exactly. uh, like you say, invaluable information. And again, something that I would happily slug into my DRF formulator notes as well for when Fusaichi Samurai comes back next time. Maybe that you don't have to hold uh, sort of an even, mediocre-looking third against him the way that you would a lot of Baffert horses who come out of the gates running. Right. Of course, yeah, and, and uh, the stat there that I have shows that, that maybe he's done this in the past at Los Al where he's gotten a race into them, but he's, he's really focused more at Santa Anita. And, um, uh, you know, so you don't hold, like you said, you don't hold those debuts against them, but you, you, you try and take a stab at uh, beating them if they're, if they're a short price at all, and I would imagine that this one will, just because Baffert's first-timers almost always get bet. All right, let's jump to the other um, thing I wanted to take a little bit of a look at, which is the, the new entries page. And if you go to entries, you'll see you can, you can select favorite tracks. I haven't done that, but you can, you can do that. They'll ri rise to the top um, so you don't scroll through in a list. But um, the nice thing about it is if you click on, let's take a look at Aqueduct today. Um, we don't have I love the weather there, by the way. Just one yeah. thing to point out that's neat is just to be yeah. able to, at a glance, see that if you're playing a circuit that's not in your part of the country, especially very useful. Absolutely, rain, rain likely, um, and you'll see in about an hour. Uh, actually, maybe we, we we might want to jump back to this because I think an hour before the first post, you actually get the live odds and the the pool information feeding into this page, which is pretty cool. Um, you, you can already see who's taking money. You can see uh, compared to the morning lines. Uh, but, but even without that, 
you get a lot of additional information. You'll see three horses have the little hot stat next to them. Um, you can click on the analysis and picks and it shows you a handicapper analysis as well as the picks from the other handicappers uh, for every race. Uh, and then it gives you closer looks uh, for every horse in the race. Um, so you can go in and do a little bit of basic handicapping even without downloading uh, any of the past performances. What did that little hot symbol mean, Mike, on the previous page? Yeah, let's take a look at it. So, so oh, and we, as I did, we we, we got we some uh, some some live money coming in. Um, so let's click on it. Um, so this is one where Kentucky Road was listed as a horse exiting a key race. He he was second, um, beaten eight and three quarters lengths. Um, but there are three of the, the the five runners from that race have have won their next start. Um, Granted, he was uh, claimed out of the race, and um, let's see if he's is he stepping into. Uh, he's still staying as a maiden claimer, so so he's at, essentially at the same level, uh, maybe even a slightly lower level because he was claimed for 50, he's in for 40 today, uh, and that race came back live. We get, it'll show up on the key race report later when we take a look at it, so we can see I, even further details on it. I love that it also includes the average next out buyer of those finishers. So let's just say right. theoretically. Kentucky Road wasn't running in another maiden claimer and was stepping up to an MSW. You're going to see, yeah, that was a really live race, but the horses are just kind of running, you know, par, even lower than par for right. the level with these 47s. Probably not one you're so interested on the rise, but back at the right level, like you say, or even a little bit lower. Uh, see, that that's very good information to have. That's a that's a good old fashioned form boost that yeah. people are going to want to see. For folks who don't didn't realize. The live toad information, that's in the green here yep. under the morning that's line. That's right. So you that's can right. look at those in conjunction with each other. That can be huge in, um, in maiden races too, just getting a sense of what the live money is versus what the morning line is. Now, granted, we're yep. far enough away from post here that maybe it's a little too soon to be making that kind of analysis, but throughout the days, um, throughout the racing days, especially in maiden races and with layoff horses, that early money often tells a tale that you want to be paying attention to. Great to be able to just see those numbers right next to each other through DRF+. Plus. Right, and you'll see Linda Rice, is, I'm assuming this is a first-time starter, uh, has, has the last three buyers uh, aren't showing up and gets first-time Lasix. Opens as the 8-5 to five morning line favorite from 5-1, to one. so early money there on that one, whether that's indica indicative of... Uh, of uh, the horse being live or not, I, I don't know, but um, it's certainly worth noting. It's a positive sign. Again, so yep. far out, it's hard to be too right. definitive, but it's right. certainly worth noting. Right, and and we'll click on a couple other hot hot stats. So you'll see uh, Trapper Jane. Uh, there's some profitable trainer angles. Again, this will probably show up in the positive ROI report, but you'll see John Paracella. Um, positive ROIs and, and high win rates on, in dirts and sprints and in maiden claiming races. So um, that's another one, you know, you get some nice information even without having to log into uh, uh, or download a past performance. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, a lot of us enjoy sort of the detective work of ferreting through trainer profiles and coming up with, uh, coming up with clever trainer stats, but how great is it to just have that information of how the trainer does in the relevant category staring you in the face like that? Right, exactly. Um, and, and, you know, another nice thing is you see just at a glance, the last three buyers for each runner. It looks like we've got a few uh, horses making their debut, um, and maybe this isn't the best race to take a look at, but you can scroll through and you can, you can take a look at every race on the card, and you can see these, the, the last out buyer uh, for every one of them. And the other nice thing is, if there's an article that relates to the race, it shows up in here. If you've got DRF+, Plus, obviously it's listed as a DRF+, Plus, but we have DRF+, Plus. we click on it, it loads a new window, we get the full uh, preview with the quotes from the trainer, with my formulator facts about the horses, um, and uh, you, know, you get access to that right from the entries page, which is fantastic. Tell the truth, Mike. You just put that up there so you could brag about how folks could more easily access your formulator facts. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's dive into some of the other features. Uh, unless there's anything we, we wanted to cover um, on the entries page, Pete. Um, I think that's a good. Uh, I think that's a good overview of it. You could honestly spend a whole webinar going through different good. ways you could use that. But we have so much ground to cover. We do. And about 40 minutes to do it. So I think we should. 
go and uh, and move ahead to the. Is the we want to talk about the access page next? Yeah, yeah. This is kind of this is our hub for everything under handicapping and PPs. It's DRF plus access. Um, you hit this page, it gives you a link to everything that we're really going to be talking about in this webinar. Uh, the first is the chart uh, search and archive. I'm going to open each one in a new window so that we've got that available. Um, and you'll see you can, you can search by horse or by track. Uh, let's start with horse. P uh, Pete, give me a horse who's run in the past year. Uh, how about American Pharaoh? Perfect. So American Pharaoh. Uh, and I think I've already searched, so he's pre-populated in there. Let's look at him. We've got American Pharaoh. Uh, we see the information. Yes, that's the correct horse. We click on him, and we'll see every race he's run in the past 365 days. So we can we can look at any of the the the. Let's look at his uh, uh, Kentucky Derby. That was a good one. And boom, there we are. It's the the full chart for. American Pharaoh for everybody in the race on the Kentucky Derby. Um, so it's it's just fantastically useful. It's, if you're a fan of a horse, you can go in, you can save each of them. They're, they show up as PDFs. You can you can save all of American Pharaoh's uh, charts from uh, 2015 from his Horse of the Year. I mean, let's go ahead and say it: his Horse of the Year campaign, um, <laughs> historic campaign. You can do that. Um, you know, you can also search for. Uh, even you know five claimers. You, you've got a favorite horse that you like. You you hit a pick five with with a certain horse that that paid well. You want to save that chart. You can go back and, and and do that through here. It's an easy way to access the charts if you are looking to maybe corroborate your own trip notes or just get some sense of of how a race was run. Obviously, if you're a formulator user, you have access to the five years of charts. But what I like about this is that ability to search by the horse's name and get, yeah. and get a chance to check out their recent form. So I can think of a few instances where that would come up and be helpful in your handicap. And even by track, it's in some ways it's it's a little easier to, to navigate than the formulator archive because the formulator archive is by date, whereas this is by track. So if you wanted to, for instance, look at all of the aqueduct um, charts, in formulator it's a lot tougher because you have to go through date by date and know which, which days they're running. Here you get a calendar where it shows you the dark days, or in this case, um, I mean they're listed future dates are listed as dark. Um, but you, you have access to the chart and the variant for every race. You can go back through. It knows there were no races between April and November, so they don't appear. The only ones that appear are ones um, that match the actual, that, that have charts for those months. You can go back. You want to look at how in, the inner dirt was playing back in January. You can, you can bring up January 1st, uh, the charts for that day. You can go through and see, um, you know, were horses generally on the lead? Were they generally closing? Were they coming from other circuits? Uh, it's fantastically useful, and it's actually one of the things. It's, it's how I wrote a lot of the recent bet. This not that I did for Gulfstream. I went through and looked at looked at every one of the shippers, every one of the charts for Gulfstream in the last winter meet. Um, took a, took a look at which tracks they were coming from, and um, it's it's a it's a great resource. Can you click on the variant really quick, Mike, for that? Yeah, absolutely. I it's, think that's a potentially interesting tool. I, I, you have to blow it up, I think, for me to see it. It's pretty small, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's useful, especially uh, there are some people out there that make their own speed figures. Um, and so it's, it's handy to have that track variant uh, immediately accessible for every given day. Absolutely. And for, for those who don't know, a track variant is simply a number that helps assess how fast or slow a track was playing on a given day. And then there are days where the variant gets split, where it might be, I'd have to look at what was going on Thursday, January 1, but maybe races 3, 5, 7, and 9 were one turn, and 1, 2, 4, right. 6, eight were two turn, turn or something right. like that. And right. uh, and it's good to know, because there'll be some days where, if, you, if you're seeing depending on how split the variants are. Now, this is going a little down a rabbit hole, but just to, <laughs> just to tease some advanced level stuff, it, it'll give you an idea maybe of how reliable a certain figure is. And some days the weather conditions are so weird, and that can really affect and make it difficult to make uh, a cohesive right. speed figure. 
Other days it's going to be fairly straightforward. That's something at a more advanced level you can factor into your work. I just think it's a great little piece of information to have available, especially if you're thinking of making your own speed figures, and that's something I think that any player who wants to get super serious about horse racing should eventually think about doing, at least for a little while, understanding the, the sort of nuance, the science, the art of making their own figures. Fortunately for you, you've got the best in the business right there in the daily racing form <laughs> in the buyer speed figures, but it's only going to intensify and help your understanding of the whole game to, to figure out how they're made, and the variant is obviously a crucial tool for doing that. Hey Absolutely. guys, you have um, we had a question that I think is, is relevant to what you're talking about right now. I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, one of the listeners um, mentions that he's frustrated that there appears to be no way of doing uh, form research for future racing, like um, doing research over the winter for the next season at one of his favorite tracks. It occurs to me that what we're talking about right now is is kind of exactly what mm -hmm. one might use to do what he's talking about. Yeah, sure. you can definitely use charts, and, and like Mike said, and I'll let him speak to exactly how he used looking at the last year of charts for um, for that type of research, but maybe the best tool for that, to, um, and maybe, we, I don't know, Mike, maybe we should just jump ahead and quickly show the winner's book. Um, yeah. The winner's book is just a, another, I think if you use the winner's book and the charts, if yep. you're sort of a racing geek like me who enjoys research, there are a lot of interesting research and development type projects you can do. So here's the winner's book. So what this is, is it's basically going to give you information about every race run at a given track. Right. Um, if you're an Excel geek or a Google Spreadsheets geek, I'm pretty sure this will cut and paste into a spreadsheet, and then you can yes. sort it by, yep. um, by all of those different headers. Which is yep. a lot. Which is also a, a, a very fun tool. But if you go back through a book like this, you're going to see certain patterns emerge. Mm -hmm. And we don't have time to get into too many specific examples of it. But if you're looking to sort of do that type of work, this is one of the tools I would highly, highly recommend you taking a look at. Mike, why don't you speak to, to how you've used the charts? Yeah. Well, the, with the winners' books. Um, there's a couple things that I find really useful, especially as a contest player. You can go track by track and look recently if certain horses, if generally the races were running to form or if for whatever reason there were a lot of long shots hitting because it shows you the, the odds of the winner. It shows you the buyers of the winner. Um, the other thing I love is it also shows you the running style of the winner. Uh, pace means within two lengths, I think, of the lead. Uh, Mid-pack means uh, essentially that. And then you, you rarely see it at Aqueduct, so you have to scroll for them. C is for closers. Um, so you can see generally how races have, without going through chart by chart, just at a glance, take a look at how races were run recently over certain surfaces and at certain tracks. That, that is just fantastic. I didn't even, yeah, I'll be honest, I didn't even quite realize about the running style. You can sort it by, you basically can in an instant make a, yep. basically a track profile. Right. You stick it into a spreadsheet, sort it by race type. One right. area where I'm, I'm going to do this as soon as I, we, we finish the webinar. You can take <laughs> a look at, for example, turf races at Belmont. Yep. And now, did, I wonder, you might have to do a little extra level of research for the one that just popped in my head, but you could take a look at how the rail settings on turf maybe affect the results and take a Perhaps, look when yeah. the rails are way out, what type of horses do well. When they're in the middle, yeah. what type of horses do well. The hedge, yep. is there no difference? These are the kind of things that you know, the geeky um, research projects that can really help you as a player, and the winner's book is just is one great tool for doing that, especially when you're looking at it in conjunction with the race charts. I have a feeling you might yep. need the race charts to get those rail settings. So you, you would. do a little bit of mixing and matching with the info you get through DRF Plus, and you become a better horse player in the process. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I know some people use these to take a look at, okay, you, you had a uh, nearly 50 to 1 winner here, 21 to 1 winner, uh, 48 to 1 winner. A lot of people will sort this and take a look at, at certain tracks are certain types of races, certain classes, certain surfaces, certain distances more likely to yield long shots or have they yielded more recent long shots than other types of races. That's the kind of deep dive that makes you a smarter player. 
Now, the winner's book is a great tool for that. Charts also can come in handy for that yep. because it's not only necessarily having a long shot winner that could tell you something about a track or a jockey. It's also looking through the charts. You could, you could uh, looking through charts and just look for, for example, big prices running second and third. See if you can identify any patterns. So there's certain trainers whose horses are out running their odds, and you can do the same thing in reverse, looking through charts as well. Take a look at beaten favorites. Um, mm -hmm. See if maybe a handful of them are coming from the same barn that's maybe having a little bit of an issue at a given time. This is that was a terrific question that came in, and uh, and and for me, those are the tools that I would use um, to to do that type of future research. Yeah, for sure. And I scroll down to the very bottom. You'll see it's the the last calendar year or the last 365 days rather at uh, at every given track. So um, really useful. Winner's book. We could do a whole webinar on. Um, Absolutely, but, we might have to. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> many people many people don't even know it exists. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic tool. And even I, even I, who am a fan of it, didn't even realize the full extent to which we could use it. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump to another one I wanted to look at real quickly. It's the buyer information. The buyers of the week are, it's pretty self-explanatory. It just shows you the top buyers across, over the last seven days, across all racetracks in the country. Um, and, you know, you can just, if there's certain horses to watch, maybe at certain circuits, you might not have realized that... Uh, uh, fire mission earned a 91 at Remington Park. You know, maybe that's a horse to watch. Um, you know, I, I know, I know this, some people love this kind of information. It's cool because a lot of times those are going to be horses in stakes races. It can yep. give, yourself, give yourself a little bit of homework, even if you don't have a plan with us where you can access all the replays. If you can, then you can watch every single replay of these horses and get a sense of how good you think they are with your, with your eyes, in addition to knowing the buyer info. But in a lot of cases, you could probably Google the horse's name and the race and see it on YouTube when you're talking yep. about stakes races from around the country. So yep. a few different ways you can use those. Yep, for sure. Uh, and then, but let's look at the buyer pars because I think that's a very useful tool. And again, it's sorted by track. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and we've looked at Aqueduct, so let's start there. Um, and and you'll see it's broken down by class and surface and age. Um, and and I know you're a big fan of them, Pete. How do you use them? I just like to use them for well, for really for two reasons. Um, in many instances. They're a good way to just eliminate non-contenders in races. I think for a lot of players, the first step in handicapping a race old school is to just go through and be able to eliminate horses. If you have a race where several horses have run up the par, um, and then you have uh, several horses who haven't, there are exceptions, of course. One of them might be an up-and-comer. But generally speaking, if they're all horses who've run a lot and somebody's never run the par, you can pretty safely eliminate that horse, to me, at least from the top slot. So that's sort yeah. of a nice way into looking at a race. They can also identify the pars, races where speed handicapping, which is always my kind of default, might not be the most useful way to crack the nut of that particular race. In other words, if you have a race, say you have a first-level allowance, and what's a, what's a good par for a first-level allowance looking at these uh, looking at uh. these. Well, let's see, if it's a three-year-old and older filly on the dirt, uh, first, a first-level allowance looks like it would be an 82. So you, you know that they typically run an 82 in this race, and not one horse in the race has run an 82. Maybe they're all very lightly raced, um, and a couple of them who've run a few races are maybe not as strong as what usually wins in that class. That's going to allow me to feel a little more confident being creative about horses who haven't hit the par and maybe come up with a, a flakier angle or reason why. Give me the, the freedom to get creative, knowing that I'm not really bucking any major trends. I'm not throwing out three favorites sure. who've all run the par. I, I sure. have. This is maybe a good opportunity to try that fuzzy 12 to one shot pressed in the top slot. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that's fantastically useful for the buyer pars, at least for me, is shippers. You know, we're looking at Aqueduct. We can see how that compares to, say, Laurel. If you've got a horse that, that maybe um, won the last start at Laurel in a certain level, you want to see what the comparable buyer pars are for that level at Laurel. Um, you can quickly take a look at that. That's an excellent point. A fifty thousand dollar claimer at Churchill isn't necessarily the same as a fifty thousand dollar claimer in New York. The pars right. allow you to really compare. 
apples to apples when you're looking at chippers. That's something you're going to see over and over again, especially when you come to the summer meets. I, I think they're an indispensable tool. I really, I'm really, yeah. i so glad that with DRF Plus you can have that information at your fingertips. Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at some of the other areas. We've got uh, a little less than half an hour left and still a lot to cover. And of course, if anybody has questions, feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to answer as we go. Um, one tool that you can use, obviously you get a lot of information in Formulator about trainers, uh, but if, even if you don't use Formulator or, or even if you do, the trainer patterns tool can be helpful for showing you who does well at particular tracks. Again, this is broken down track by track rather than trainer by trainer. So if you want to click on, say, Aqueduct, it will show you information about the current meet on the left. So the first ones before the asterisk, these first, uh, was that first five, are showing Rudy Rodriguez is 15 for 46 at the current meet, winning at 32% in the money at 52%. His average winning payout um, uh, is 875. So that's, uh, that's just helpful uh, just right off the bat to see who's hot at a current meet. Um, you know, Linda Rice, I see winning 21%, but in the money nearly 70% at the meet. Uh, and of course, her horses that are winning are, are, are not really paying uh, very much, just over $6. Um, so it's, it's just at, at a quick glance, it's, it's nice to see that information a little deeper than what you get in the, in the racing form. I think you're going to have an intuitive understanding of this if it's a circuit you follow. And in that right. case, I'd maybe look at this just to see if any information surprises you. But I can see this really coming into play in an event like the National Handicapping Championship we have coming up in the, at the end of January for folks who've yeah, qualified absolutely. for that. And you, you have to play, um, you, know, you don't have to play, but you have the option of playing six or seven different tracks on the first two days. And... You, you should really have a familiarity with who the key players are on these circuits. I believe the trainer patterns is a good way very quickly to get a basic sense of what's going on. When it comes to trends analysis, who's hot, who's not, I would then combine this type of information with the information we saw back in the winner's book, where maybe sure. the most valuable info you could find is where there's some recent development that maybe contradicts what you're seeing in these overall patterns where you can find a trainer who's maybe not in the top 10, who's been performing like a trainer in the top 10 would be expected to, or vice versa. Find the leading trainer has had uh, seven horses, short prices, they've all run out. If you go through the charts, you can figure that out and, uh, and maybe know to, to fade that trainer when everybody else is lumping on. So there's, yeah. there's levels. It's, it's like an onion. There's layers upon yeah. layers of research you can do in your handicapping. And uh, the trainer pattern, though, is one of those good just – at a glance way to, to, to sort of see what's going on in a particular circuit in the big the slightly bigger picture. Absolutely. And then the, the the stats on the right of those are at that track for that trainer in the last three years. If you scroll down to the bottom you'll see it's defined at the bottom. North American starts actually it's not even uh, just that track, it's all North American starts in the last three years. So uh, you can see, in general, how they do off of longer layoffs, how they do off of shorter layoffs, how they do first off the claim, first start, at all tracks in North America. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff, and obviously you can dig deeper if you use Formulator, um, but uh, just at a, at a higher level, it's, it's nice to have this information at your fingertips. For sure. All right, let's, Should we move on to the, uh, we're going to talk about positive ROI? Positive ROI report. So this is another one. Um, this is a, another one that's fantastically useful for folks uh, like at the NHC where they've got to play many different tracks, many of which they're not necessarily familiar with. This report comes out daily. Uh, let's actually take a look at today's. It's a PDF. Um, it gets posted. You'll see the early file gets posted in the, in the afternoon. The final file is pro posted by 7 p.m. Eastern time the day prior to each race. So we only have today's and previous ones. Um, we'll right click. Actually, we'll just go straight in. It launches a new window. Um, it's a PDF, as I said. So you could download it and save it if you wanted. And what it does is it lists at the top the ones with the highest ROI with the minimum of 20 starts in this 
it's this current calendar year and the previous calendar year. So from, from January 1st of 2014 to now, um, the top trainer angles by ROI. Um, so it's 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 kind of helpful, and then it shows That's top fantastic. trainer, yeah, top trainer jockey combinations at current meet recently and for the year. Not necessarily automatic bets, but it just again, it's a way into a race, knowing right. um, you know, especially given the specifics of what the stat is, you can apply logic and say, okay, is this one that I think there's a real reason it's going to go forward? This is a horse I maybe want to give an extra look to. And sure, in contest play, um, it, that might be enough, especially if it's if the stat is pointing out a long shot. Having that positive stat might be enough to make that horse play 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it may make you you maybe you're not looking at Mahoning Valley uh, today, but you'll see you know uh, trainer L Smith does well second off a, lo a longer layoff. Um, maybe you dive in and pull up the PPs for Mahoning Valley Race Four uh, and see if that horse fits on paper and you, and you might end up making a bet on a horse that you weren't planning on. That's a good example too of a horse where I feel like the stat makes me, it's just so logical to me that some trainers would do really well second off a layoff bringing horse back maybe as we were discussing before a little bit short of fitness and then and then mm -hmm. moving forward. I have a little more reason to believe a stat like that's going to go forward. I mean it, to using the bond example, maybe claiming races, it's it's great information to know that right. when he uh, that, that when he, they're in for a tag, um, that they're alive. But it'd be more to me like the kind of thing that would even be more uh, actionable would be if it was to have a, have numbers like that first time in maiden claiming races, where it's, sure. it's telling you a little bit more of the story. Sure. There's, sure. there's a lot of great information to be gleaned from a positive ROI report, and, and I think Mike's right. It's a, it's a particularly excellent tool for contest players looking to get a jump on their competition at a glance. Yeah, and then what it does is it shows track by track all of the ones that match, that have a positive ROI and a high win rate. So it's, it is doing, uh, and if you, uh, I think on the site it defines the ones, so here, even though John Paracel has only had eight runners, he's won with half of them in maiden claiming races in the last nearly two years, it shows up there. If he had a 299 ROI but was one for 35 and you had just a huge bomb that, that accounted for that ROI, like for instance, Gennady Dorachenko in graded stakes races I think is one for 64 but it was 110 to one. So he has a positive ROI in graded stakes races in the last couple years because Hero of Order uh, blew up the tote on, uh, in the Louisiana Derby. Uh, that would not make the list because it has to be both a positive ROI and a high enough win percentage. Gennady Dorachenko's mic drop moment, as you once described exactly. it on the DRF players. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But the nice thing about this is if you're playing Aqueduct today, I like to look for not necessarily horses with single positive trainer angles, but these these ones where the, you'll get two or three. So tra without even looking at the odds, you've got to think Trapper Jane is a bit live here because John Paracella does well in dirt, sprints, and maiden claiming, and, and this is all three. Uh, of course, Chad Brown does well in, in most categories, but you see uh, he's got a, a horse in the sixth today who he does well in two-year-old races off of this length of layoff and in maiden special weights. So when you can combine all three, that's when you sometimes have something, especially if you get a decent price on them. That's that's where you, you could. I like to use this report, and then of course I like to dive into uh, Formulator further and take a look at at those horses and which ones won and where they won and that sort of thing. It's just a, a fantastic tool to highlight things that when you're sort of in the grind of doing, especially if you're capping multiple cards, you can miss these things, and, and it's yeah. nice to have them called out for you in a simple way as sort of another another check through to just make you pay that little bit of extra attention. You see a horse has positive stats with this trainer in multiple categories. It, it's going to pay to at least know that, whether or not you're going right. to act on it or not. Right. Like, for instance, Southern Stroll in the seventh at Gulfstream. Uh, was that? Four positive stats for Navarro. Uh, 
first off a win in dirt races and sprint races and claiming races. So you got to think combined together. He does quite well in, in, with this with this type. Um, Certainly worth a second look at the least. Yeah. Right. So uh, let's let's jump to. I'll close this. We'll go back to uh, our our access page. Let's pull up the key race report one. Uh, this is a very similar looking page, obviously, and the, and the files come at, the, at, at essentially the same time, and it's structured the same sort of way, where it's a PDF, it shows all of the horses, and it shows you at the top an index of all of the runners that are listed in the report, which is helpful. Um, so you can know, and the bold ones, as I mentioned earlier, are any ones with three next out winners or more coming out of that race. Uh, so it's again, as a, especially as a contest player, you can know, hey, look, Wolf Den in, in Gulfstream Park race 10 is is a uh, coming out of a particularly live race. Maybe I should take a further look at that horse. Yeah, another just great tool to highlight things that are going to be worthy of future examination and key races, uh, especially. I mean, the trainer stats they're there in the form. Key races you'd have to do that extra level of clicking to, uh, to to get to them. So to have this highlighted, and to have it highlighted if, even if you're not doing the full dive on Formulator, it's in, it's invaluable. So let's right. walk the folks through how this, uh, how this works, what information we're giving here. Yeah, so earlier when we were looking at the entries, we saw Kentucky Road was coming out of a, of, of a key race with three next out winners from five to run. It gives you a lot more detail in the key race report about what type of race that was. So you'll see... Kentucky Road is entered today at Aqueduct Race 1, uh, the two-horse, 5-2 to two morning line, here's the, the class trainer and jockey. Last race, October 29th, third at Belmont, this is your class level, it shows the times, the distance, the surface, it shows the winner has not run back yet, Kentucky Road ran second in that race, but all of the horses that he finished ahead of have since run, three of the five have won, two of them won easily um, by open lengths and earned pretty decent buyers. Another one won at a huge price moving to the turf uh, and, and shipping down to Tampa. So, um, I, you know, I, again, without watching, you want, might want to watch the replay, but, but certainly just looking at this, you, you would think the form of that race has certainly been flattered and his, his second place finish um, might even be better than it looked. So I might have misspoke before. In fact, I think I did misspeak before. When we were looking at the sort of key race feature in the entries, there was something about the average. It looked like it was like the average buyer right. of right. this 47. What was that indicating? So what that is doing is it's just doing a mathematical. It's adding all five of these together and then make, taking the average. So this 22 here drags oh. it down. And the 33 drags it down as well, but I'm less less interested in the average and more interested in you know the top maybe exactly. the top performers. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was the average of the ones who'd won. No. Guess, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's, that's it's of all runners. So yeah. I think if you're interested in key races, maybe you let the entries point you to them, then come right. to the key race report and get all of this extra information here. That's right. going to give you a much better picture. Right. Right, and and for instance, the in race two, we've got another one that's maybe a less. I would I would take a less favorable view of this runner, even though it was coming out of a key race. The the three winners from four next out were second, third, and fourth. Rody Rendezvous ran last, you know, so it's not like he or she finished in front of any of these next out winners. Um, so uh, Kentucky Road is the, is the kind that I like to elevate R roadie rendezvous, even though matches uh, by definition a key race is maybe one, uh, you know, you, you'd have to look a little deeper to, to try and That's see whether there's a play. That's what I was going to say. I mean, to yeah. me, if this horse just didn't run a step, broke last and circled and did nothing, I agree 100% with what you're saying, Mike. But I'll also say, and I don't, I don't remember this race, so I don't know, but if you can go to the chart, and right. see that Rodi Rendezvous was part of a hot pace right. and ended sure. up finishing last in a race that produced next out winners, that is still a horse I'd give an yeah. extra look to. So part Absolutely. of what you're doing with the key race report is just highlighting races where you're going to want to go and do that further research. And I'll also say this, if you like this type of information, and I do, it's also, if, if you eventually, if you take the next step up and become a formulator user, right. it's really great because 
you can then go into the chart and make it interactive right. and see not just what the horses ran in their next start, that information you see in the column all the way over here to the right, but see what they ran in this race right. and in previous races. So you can right. really get a sense looking at what their speed figures are um, were in this key race and then what they were the next time you get, a, you get a real sense, because sometimes you'll find a race that to me is a key race, even though maybe only one of the other horses has come out of it and won, but right. three of them all improved their speed figures by 10 points. So that right. gives you a whole other bit of the film. Exactly, and and some you know key races, obviously looking at winners, but you know looking at privately speaking, ran third, missed by a neck, earned a 77 buyer. That's a strong effort, even though that was not a winning uh, it was probably a winning effort, even though it was not credited as a win. Um, so that's a lot of, you won't get that in the key race report, but you certainly can get that information within Formulator. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's but, but DRF Plus, I mean, this information alone, again, it points yeah. you to further research, it gives you extra horses to pay attention to at a glance, very valuable in and of itself, and maybe uh, it, it provides a stepping stone to get people to, to go for, uh, for Formulator and do some of the, other amazing stuff you can do with that program. Yep, absolutely. Well, we've got about 10, just about 10 minutes left, maybe a little bit less. So let's let's jump to a couple more things I wanted to look at. One of my favorites um, is the debut reports, um, and this is a screen. Um, Dan Illman was the architect of this. It's a fantastic uh, tool, um, and it and it has it for all horses making their debut by trainer, broodmare, sire, or sire. Um, Trainer, if you're looking at the trainer and you use Formulator, you have access to this information. But even still, if you don't, you can look at every horse for every trainer who has won or even finished in the money in making their debut anywhere in North America this year. So we're looking at debut trainers um, for 2015. It, it also has a report for, for each of the previous calendar years in there. So you'll see a, a trainer, Tom Albertrani. He's one for 46 with um, four second place finishes, four, uh, three third place finishes for a 2% win rate and a 15 cent ROI. And then you'll see on the right, this is all starters in North America. So he wins generally at a 10% rate and a $1.43 ROI with all runners. And then you'll see where did those winners or even those ones that hit the board, um, where were they running? Um, you know, and you'll see his winner came March 26th at Gulfstream Park and paid all of seven dollars. Uh, even though he did have a few hit the board at big prices, it's a great tool. One of the questions I get asked the most by newer racing fans when they'll they'll flip through the form and they'll see a maiden race and there's some comparatively little information, and they'll say, "Well, well, how do you deal with this?" Well, this is the kind of tool that could really help you with a maiden race because, as Mike's about to show you, not only do you get a sense of trainers and and how they might do in their maiden races, but you can also take a look at both sires and dam sires, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, the sire one is, is they're all uh, broken out the same way by calendar year. Fortunately, we're, we're almost done with 2015, so we have a good sample looking at, at this calendar year. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's broken out by any, any horse that has had, at, any sire has had at least one debut winner appears on this list. So if you don't see the horse on here or the sire on here, that means he, he, th that sire has not had a debut winner in 2015. Um, but you scroll, scroll through and then any of the other ones that hit the board do appear. And so we, we'll look at uh, a sire like a Fleet Alex. He wins about half as much and pays about exactly half as much with debuters as he does with all of his runners in, in 2015. Um, and so it's nice, you can scroll through, look at any, if you, obviously if there's a horse in particular, like let's say there's an Any Given Saturday um, debut or you want to look at that horse in particular, you can do that. Or you can just look, I like to even look through and just find ones where either they're underperforming or overperforming based on all runners. Um, one good example, and forgive me as I scroll, that I found recently was Indian Charlie. Um, of course, I'm uh, jumped past him, but uh, Indian. Is, is uh, it problem. The problem with the search is it also brings up the broodmare sire. So you might get, uh, you know, if there was an Indian Charlie broodmare, 
would appear there. So Indian Charlie, nice. 15, yeah, 15% 15 winners, dollar nine ROI with all runners, but he's only one for 28 this year uh, with debuters. Um, and you'll see exactly who those horses are, and the one debut winner was Todd Pletcher's first spark, um, sprinting on the dirt. I, I, I really like, and I actually used this tool in uh, my Bet This, Not That for Gulfstream Park because oh, I, looked, I looked at uh, English Channel. Uh, fantastic turf sire. He just doesn't, and I think, let's see, oh, he's, he's right up here. Uh, there he is. One for 44 with first out uh, horses this year. You take a little One bit for of So the number on the right is, the, uh, the, let's use English Channel as an example. Those 44 starters are first-time starters in 2015. Correct. The At all 814 tracks. number right. is, is what? All runners. For English All channel. runners, not just first-time starters for 2015 or for Correct. a longer time period. No, 2015. Yep. So, so there have been 814 starts by offspring of English Channel in North America in 2015. Uh, he's won. They've won 89 races. Um, and if you do the math, you'll see um, what is it? 770 of them were not making their debut. We should, um, we should quickly move on here. We've got about, about three minutes left. We're not going to be able to fully cover the last three things we wanted to talk yep. about. We kind of already did the winner's book, at least. But we did. really quick, tell us about the, uh, the – what do we want to talk about next? The Breeze Figs? I'll just mention the Breeze Figs really quickly. What the Breeze Figs is, it's a, it's a similar report. Um, there's a lot of information about how to use them. There's a lot of information up here. Uh, it used to be $5. Now it's free. The, the bulk of the report is these two. They come out daily. You'll see we already have for tomorrow. Uh, it looks at all of horses coming out of two-year-old and training sales, and, it, and it, it gives a review about how they worked in that sale. Uh, and it shows... And it's, it's assigning a figure a key to a, akin to a buyer figure for right. the sale workouts. I know right. Jonathan Tension currently in first place on the NHC Tour has used the Breeze Figs to ferret out some nice price winners in contests. It's not a tool that I have much experience with, but I, I think I want to check it out. Yeah, it's essentially a workout report for those two-year-old in training uh, workouts. Uh, and, and they appear for horses that have, before they've made their fourth career start, after that they fall off the list. Okay, and let's take a quick look at game plan, which is something I think we could spend a lot of time on if we had much more time. Yeah, let's, uh, and, and it's the last thing we'll look at. It comes, comes out daily. We've got today's up there now. I mentioned earlier I have a play in today. I, uh, I actually wrote up in the same race a live long shot that I like and a vulnerable favorite that I'm um, trying to play against. So it has information from, and it, it, this is nice. I, one of the things I like about game plan is Dave Litvin, for instance, has to give a pick top three finishers for every race, in uh, every card at Naira track. But you don't know, you can be based on his best bet, who he likes best, you don't know really who he's looking to play. Here, he's highlighted a horse that he's looking to play. Now that's that's terrific information. You, you, a public handicapper obviously isn't going to like all the opinions the same. Game right. plan is a way to get that insight, and also a place to sort of put together all of the talent, uh, all of the talented handicappers at DRF, and see what their thoughts are in one place. And in that way, you can sort of game plan your day. If you don't mm -hmm. have time to handicap, you can always handicap your handicappers and try to follow along with people that you know you're simpatico with and who look at the world the same way you do. Game plan gives you a chance to, to put that plan into action. Yep, and it also includes my formulator facts and it includes closer looks for the main tracks. Um, I think it's ultimately Naira tracks, Southern California tracks, uh, Gulfstream. Um, they appear, and, and a lot of people like to use this because they'll print it out and they'll keep it separate and you know, maybe in, in certainly in formulator you can turn off the closer looks and um, they like to just have this handy so uh, fantastically useful tool you get it every day um, Wednesday through Sunday 